Good morning and welcome to another Vintage View Wine Storage Systems webinar. My name is Jacob Harkins. I'm the marketing director here and I'm really happy that you could join us. Uh, despite what you see in the background of my video, I'm actually sitting in my son, my three-year-old son's bedroom right now on a uh, on a, uh, a little stuffy chair and I've got a dog and some kids running around. So if there's any sort of interruptions in the middle of this, I apologize, but this is our new reality for a little bit anyway, trying to effectively operate business from our homes, home offices, or wherever we can find space. Today's topic is wine cellar design trends. It's one of five of our current offerings of our webinars. Yesterday we did planning for active and passive sellers. Last week we did some product knowledge and tomorrow we'll wrap up this series with a our how to sell a wine cellar and our vintage view products and we hope that you can join us for that and anyone else in the future. As always we encourage uh, some feedback either in the zoom chat function you can pop in some questions there. You can follow up with some emails to myself or your sales rep after this. I want to know how we did, what other topics we might be able to cover, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Before we jump in, if you are unfamiliar with us, Vintage View, we invented the Label Forward Metal Wine Rack in 2001. It's a patented design that we really feel has uh, revolutionized the way we look at the wine cellar and wine storage. A lot of the things that we're going to cover today. We work with talented design build professionals like yourselves, and our hope is to provide meaningful relationships, be the best manufacturer in the wine cellar that you can ever imagine, and really just create amazing uh, wine projects for your clients with you guys. So uh, that's uh, a little bit about who we are, and, and this is a little bit about what we're gonna jump into today. I will preface this, this was written before the coronavirus hit. Um, I still believe a lot of these trends that we're going to talk about are going to remain relevant, but you know we're going to be watching these very, very uh, closely in the coming months as we see how the, uh, the the slowdown in the economy affects our residential and commercial projects. Uh, so there might be an update to this in a couple of months, depending on how that stuff works out. So we'll jump into the first trend, and uh, this is something that is is very paramount to what we do, and it's simply the style of racking that we're seeing. So if you looked at a wine tiller 10, 15, 20 years ago, 30, 40, 50 years ago, it was a wood lattice style thing um, in a basement. Uh, that has changed quite a bit with a couple of things. One, the label forward design, the thing that we mentioned that kind of helped launch our company as a whole has changed fundamentally design aspects of this. So this is really uh, known as label out, display racking, sideways racking, any, any way you put it, but instead of seeing the cork of the bottle, you're seeing the the label and there's a lot of advantages to that and the reason why it's become very prevalent uh one it's bottle service art right you can see the label they they actually have the you know wineries put a lot of, of time in effort into the branding and when you see that it's a lot more uh entertaining to look at than just a cork it's engaging it brings back whether you're talking about the the uh the home uh, wine cellar or the the someone visiting a restaurant they can connect with those labels that they might remember from a trip to a vineyard or from another experience. They, the, this style of racking can really run the game from traditional to contemporary design, which we'll, we'll uh, call out a little bit later in here. Uh, the labels are easier to find, right? This is something that if you're talking about a commercial wine cellar or a residential cellar that has thousands of bottles, when you can see the label and read something, it's a little bit easier than having to use a tagging system or something else. So a lot of their, and you know, there's really not a lot of disadvantages to this other than maybe aesthetic appeal, but um, these are can be every, every bit as efficient as, as other uh, wine racking systems out there that are, that are uh, cork forward, so to speak. Um, for, and, and that doesn't mean that cork forward is going away. Uh, as you can see in this picture right here, it still can be a nice design accent. It still can break up columns. There's still going to be clients who want that either more traditional look or have a preference for it one way or another. So it hasn't gone away. It's just this label forward has really given us an extra tool in the design, uh, the design element. So that's uh, that's the first piece that's changed with the actual wine racking itself. The second piece that is, has changed is the uh, the move into metal wine racking. Again, if you go back 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years, every wine cell that you'd ever seen built was built out of wood or sometimes some sort of stone. That has been changing every bit in the last five years, 10 years. I mean, really in the last 20 years, but, but 
specifically very recently, it's kind of caught fire. The reason is, it, again, it, it really has that scalability from the traditional design to contemporary. And there's a lot of advantages to, um, to why that will actually work well in the, um, work well you know in the in the cellar for one strength of the metal equals a thinner cradle this means a more minimalist appeal it can be very cost effective on a per bottle basis when you're talking about the sheer msrp pricing you're talking these types of systems that we sell can start at three bucks a bottle of storage uh you know they go up from there depending on some designer choices etc uh compare that to 10 or 15 dollars for millwork so you can really expand a, a lot in term without crushing a budget these types of systems that we produce um, and, and others in, you know, they're scalable. A few bottles, two, three, four, five, six, to tens of thousands. Um, and it's got that industrial aesthetic potential. So you can really play with a lot of the design stuff. And the, we have a limitless option of, of powder coating. So we can match to meet hardware, match to meet other colors in, in a room. And so you have a lot of uh, advantages there. So now that we've talked about the actual racking itself that has been a forefront of of the trends the next piece that i sort of began to touch on when we talk about the ability to powder coat is the actual finishes themselves so what we're seeing now is as interior design professionals as architectural professionals as uh the wine cellar builder in integrates these kind of uh, new rules and, and thought processes to their their cellar they are going away from just one color and using uh the finishes themselves to match other hardware selection. Uh, think of this as if you're doing a wine wall in the kitchen, uh, you want to match whatever the 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 uh, door handles are to the cabinetry, uh, whether it's stainless steel, brushed, uh, brushed nickel, uh, those types of things. You want to meet up with that. Even if you're doing a, a larger kind of expansive basement piece, you still want to make those choices to to really integrate well with the actual um, you know the desire of the client or the the room remodel. This includes, we've got some super hot stuff. You can go gold and bronze, uh, you know, hipster bronze, honey gold. I've heard these types of things a million different ways, but you know, gold, gold and bronzes are so in, and we're seeing a lot of that move into the wine cellar, especially in more kind of display oriented ones, ones that might be more for a casual drinker that we'll touch on in one of the other trends a little bit later. I uh, would see gun metal and those kind of chic, you know, just elevated upgraded premier finishes. We're also, of course, seeing a lot of kind of the timeless, uh, timeless approach to it, which hasn't changed. You've got your matte blacks, which have a, a really good range. You've got uh, brushed nickel, stainless steel kind of look. You can go chrome. And, and really the idea being that these finishes, while one might be more relevant to any particular project you're doing than another, the idea being is you should have four, five, six to choose from. Whereas, you know, three, four, five years ago, you might have only had two or three to choose from. So the finishes are evolving with every bit of, of other interior design. And again, commercial, residential doesn't really matter. And then you're seeing the uh, addition of elevated finishes. Uh, we just personally launched uh, a Lux line to our, our Hallmark W series, which if you took our training last week or have worked with us, you, that's our, our uh, original label forward wine racking. And what we see here is a, an appetite for a higher end elevated version from everything else. So we're getting rid of uh, plastic or rubber finishing pieces, doing machine rounding, so a really cohesive look, you know, replacing mounting hole covers, rubber with a plated thing. The consumer wants these elevated finishes. They're willing to spend the money on them. So whether it is a premier, a premium finish like a, a golden bronze or a rounded tip on a, a, a column racking, you've got the options there and, and the customers are clamoring for it. And they're not afraid to pay a premium on a lot of these things leads us into our next trend, uh, not just for geeks. This is super important to understand why pretty much everything that we just started talking about and the, and the trends that we'll talk about after, the market has opened up. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we were talking about restaurants with voluminous wine lists, and we were talking about wine geeks who had 2,000, 3,000 bottle uh, collections. Now we're still talking about those. Those people are still very important to this industry. However, we're also talking about the casual wine lover, someone who might have 50 bottles, 100 bottles. They might be decent bottles. Some might be good bottles, but they're not necessarily collecting what I would call those dust worthy wines. So this means that when you're speaking with your clients, 
you can reach out to a, a wider section of, of clientele now. Uh, they, they're going to want a wine wall upgrade, even if they're not a diehard collector. And then of course, you're still going to have those diehard collectors that want those bigger projects as well. So it's the best of both worlds. That diehard collector hasn't gone anywhere, probably has become a little bit stronger. And we've added a much bigger sec segment to the market to, to, to sell these two. If you were on our call yesterday, we talked about passive versus active sellers. And the passive seller is paramount to this trend. The passive being a wine room that has uh, no additional cooling need, cooling added to it. So it can be done um, starting at a few hundred dollars, you know, as a little bit of an upgrade. And this is something that with a little bit of common sense, you can store wines in the short to midterm. There's a lot to learn about how to actually actively uh, specify a passive seller and what that common sense means. And we covered that yesterday and we'll be doing it again in a few weeks. So be on the lookout for that if you need some more information on that. But just know it's not always a cooled wine seller, which again helps us expand to those other markets. The consumer wants to put some wine up on the wall. They want to engage with it with their friends. And even if they're not willing to spend 10, 15, 20, $30,000 on that really expansive wine cellar, they can still get a really nice room, a really nice display. And that is helping us get more clients, find more clients, whether they're consumer, you know, the, the direct consumer for, for a residential or maybe that more casual uh, restaurant spot that just wants to have a couple of hot wines for the, the customers to, to check out. One thing to consider about the casual wine drinker is always think about to the future. And this is something that, again, we cover more detail in the active versus passive. But think about when you're specifying these to your casual wine drinkers, are they going to change their wine habits? Do you need to specify some things in there to help get ready for some cooling? Are they going to triple their collection in a hundred, you know, in, in, a, in a year or two? You know, what are they doing with that and, and make some smart choices early on so that their wine wall, wine display can expand with their wine drinking. One of the, the stories I'll always tell people is me personally, I started drinking Carlo Rossi in, in college and I, went to Italy with a good college friend right after, you know, doing the backpacking through. And I, I fell in love with wine touring Piedmont in North uh, Western Italy. And at that point I came home and became, you know, slowly but surely became a wine geek. So my, my wine buying habits have changed from what was on sale at the liquor store to really going after a lot of, you know, you know, whether it's allocated wines, et cetera. And a lot of people take that journey. So if they're starting on the casual, just sort of think about those things. So you might make some different decisions and, and, in the specifying. So now that we've opened up the idea of, we've changed the racking style quite a bit, metal, label forward. We have increased the number of, of customers potential because it's uh, for the casual wine drinker all the way up to that hardcore wine drinker. The, the next trend that is super important to consider, and this is where your role becomes incredibly important, these are designed well. Go back 15 years ago, a wine room was a utility function put up some racking, make sure you could fit 2000 bottles, make sure it was cooled. And that was, that was the end of the discussion. If it worked well, it was, it was great. Now it has to work well and look great. So this is where we see a lot of interior design firms and architecture firms kind of putting their stamp on things. Um, and we see a lot of the wine cellar builders really evolving quickly to make sure that they can provide that, uh, that amazing service of, of practicality with the actual design elements itself. And this is where you see all over Instagram or Pinterest or Facebook, these beautiful images of wine tellers. And if you do them smart, you can have them be functional and every bit as beautiful. The idea being here is that we, we bridge across the themes of design. You see them done traditional, transitional, contemporary. You've always seen traditional in wine tellers. The difference is now they're actually designed with a purpose and well, and it just, it is often, the prettiest room in the house, <laughs> at least if you like wine. So this is the, the idea to think about when you're looking at these, depend, regardless of if your, your client, where they fall in the traditional to contemporary scale, you've got to design this thing well. So this is an example. This was designed by uh, Wine Racks America. Um, what we look at in, in general and traditional, it's, it's pulling from those like 19th century, uh, early 20th century European design, those old world kind of rich and, and steeped in uh, rich wine history. You've got your wood in this. You've got your dark tones. You're generally in the basement with these. This is where you're still seeing metal, right? Because metal is a trend, but it's going to be a darker metal. It's going to be that matte black metal. It's going to blend in with that wood. You're going to probably mix in some of that cork forward, whether it's bins or lattice style racking, 
with that display label forward racking, kind of the, a little bit of here. And this particular one that you're looking at here, um, I love the elements here because you look at a ceiling which has uh, the oak staves from a, a, a wine barrel with backlit LED. So really modern approach to thinking about the traditional because you've got the cool lighting, but you're using all these old world elements. When you see this from back from another vantage point, you see the mix of kind of where some of those large format bottles can, can stretch into there, into those big diamond bins and still have that beautiful kind of metal label for it as well. So this is really, you know, traditional wine cellars have always been a thing and now they're just, I mean, I, I don't know what the rest of this house in Sonoma, California looks like, but I can tell you this would be my favorite room in the house. If you're working in the transitional space, if you're working in the suburban space, this is something that we're seeing a lot of, actually, this is probably the most popular um, style that we're seeing just because of the, uh, I mean, how many, how many people, types of people this transitional design can hit. And the, while I'm showing you only residential designs, the concepts are gonna pull well into your commercial designs as, as well. So there's not one or the other. So transitional is we're, we're mixing the mediums, right? We are uh, warming up contemporary with wood. Uh, reclaimed wood, uh, you know, some of those more old school elements. And then, you know, on the converse side, we're modernizing those pieces with our display racking and, and metal and glass and, and all that. So it's really just kind of mixing metals like you're and mixing wood and mixing stone or whatever those elements are like you would in any other room in the home or restaurant. This particular home is located just in the suburbs of Minnesota. It was a show home. And what I love about this is you can kind of feel that this is a, a very uh, typical, in my mind, uh, uh, basement, you know, living space, right? You see a lot of these really beautiful remodels. And in this case here, you've got iron frame glass, display racking that gives you that modern pop and open airy feel. And as you walk and you look through that visually, that, that wood floor carries right through and gives you the, the best of that new and old world. So really popular. And, and if you're working in the suburban market, you're gonna see a lot of requests for this. And you know, this is a testament to every bit of, of that transitional design was thought to that wet bar, to that entertainment area, as it was all the way through that, that wine collection. And then we have contemporary. Um, we see a lot of contemporary. We get a lot of beautiful contemporary photos, California contemporary, you could call it. Uh, this is where, Metal is the primary racking system. You have uh, reduced or eliminated the wood. You can still use those matte blacks, but often are seeing more flashy finishes. This is where your golden bronze, your chromes might come in here. Um, realizing that I, I still have a little typo in here. These are not in the basement. These are actually, generally speaking, main floor living areas. Uh, you know, glass and metal. There's a lot of pass-through light, so you can see from one room to the next. If you're trying to do this and specify this for a more serious collector who wants to keep their wine safe for a long time, I highly recommend you take that active versus passive cellaring course to understand the steps and the planning that would go in, that would be involved to make something like this. Uh, every bit is as practical for long-term storage as like those basements. This particular home is one that, uh, this is where we launched some new products in, uh, in Las Vegas in January. This was the uh, New American Home 2020 as part of the International Builder Show. You have the peg style racking of our Vino series on a minimalist spacing on our new Vino series post system. You've got an acrylic panel, the, the Vino series panel in the, in the middle that's really the highlight, right, when you walk through the door. And then as you can see, as you get back into the rest of this room, this is all about showing off the wine collection. This collector here, this homeowner, probably likes wine, but they're more concerned about showing off the wine. So that's the spectrum that you might have to specify to compared to maybe that first traditional one that we looked at where they love the, the wine to look good, but they're more concerned about the wine storage itself. So that's really when you understand kind of the designer touch to this, you need to be hitting on your customer's taste, whether they're traditional, contemporary, or transitional, make sure that your, your, your design is as well as every other room in the home or restaurant. So as you can see, we can kind of build on these as these things become designer elements, practical or showy or both, the location is moved. We've touched on this, but you are no longer seeing just sellers. We talk about them as wine sellers, you know, as a, as a, as a, an, a segment, but they are not just a seller. 
They are under the stairs, living rooms, kitchens, wet bars, room dividers, behind a host stand. They're the virtual wine list at a restaurant. You name it, if you use common sense, again, the stuff that we cover a lot in our active versus passive cellaring course, these wine rooms are being put anywhere you can smartly do it, right? They're, they're in just about any room that you want to engage with. And that's the point of these elements. People love their wine and the restaurants love the customers to see the wine. So it makes a lot of sense that you bring it to where the people are congregating. Kitchens are, are an example, right? Look at this one. This one is uh, in uh, Newport Beach, California. This is actually just one floor of a two-story wine room that is connected that you can kind of see by a glass floor ceiling, depending on what floor you're on. And what you do here, this is a climate controlled version of it that you can see the wine, you can engage with it from the other side of, of this room when you're having, when you're dining. When you're in the kitchen itself, you're cooking, your friends are around that island, you're grabbing a bottle. It really just in, in, engages at every moment with that collection, with that passion of that homeowner. Again, you have to be very smart how to store this wine, wine safely because of the exposure and heat and all that stuff that uh, if you have questions on, please take that other webinar. In the commercial setting, the wine list, um, this is not necessarily an area other than it's somewhere the customer can see it. This happens to be a uh, Fidelitas winery in, uh, there's two locations, one outside of Seattle and one at their vineyard in, in Eastern Washington. And they have basically used this as a brand wall. The idea is that label Ford shows off their, their brand and their label and you come into the tasting room and you see their wines and it makes you want to ask questions. And that's what you're seeing in the restaurants. They're putting this in areas where you can see the wine list, so to speak. It's a lot more approachable than, you know, that really thick wine list that has a bunch of um, names and terms that we might not be familiar with, the customer might be familiar with, but they, they'll remember that label that they drank. They'll want to ask questions. So really important for the commercial aspect to put that on display. And I'll tell you this, and I've noted this in a couple of our webinars in the last week or so, as our restaurant friends and partners start to rebuild, hopefully when, when this pandemic passes as soon as, sooner than later, they're going to be looking for ideas on ways that they can um, bring their restaurants back to profitability. So if you're working with them, putting this on display, you can really give them an ROI focused thing that's going to be a nice upgrade to their, their space that can give them something to sell. So you can be a good consultant salesperson. We'll cover that a little bit more in tomorrow's how to sell a wine seller as well. Under the stairs is probably my favorite trend. And this is because if you think about a home specifically, this is often the area where you're putting luggage, you're putting a bunch of stuff. Um, it's not very pretty. Pop out that wall or keep the wall and swap it out with glass. Use that as a, a space with, and especially using like our W series uh, framing systems where you can go down the same angle as the stair. In this case, we're using the bottom of the flat stairs, but we can provide you with angle brackets that will, will help you go down like a 45 degree angle, or I'm sorry, whatever that angle would be naturally. And then all of a sudden you turn the space passive or active into something that's usable, functional, and beautiful. In this particular kitchen that you're seeing here, you can just imagine like, I mean, that space would have been dead. What else are you gonna do with it? And here you've put the, the passion of the homeowner on display. And you can imagine how easy those bottles are to access if they're entertaining. And I would imagine with a kitchen like this, you're entertaining a lot. It's a very big kitchen, <laughs> a very big dining table. So, you know, that's really, really paramount to a lot of the, the things we're doing is, is taking these awkward spaces and, and using our flexible racking systems to fill that in and make, make the customers really happy. And then we've got room dividers, commercial, residential. This really works well here. You can use a number of our systems, whether it's uh, the Evolution Wine Tower, the acrylic thing you're seeing here in a custom section, any of those framing systems you've seen here before, where you can put single bottle deep, double, triple, you know, five deep, six deep to, to set off rooms. In, uh, in a home, this might be to just divide a big room, you know, between a dining area and a sitting area. In a restaurant, you might be able to see that in an area where um, they put a, they, they've created a semi-private dining, dining room. Um, that they can rent out and actually use as a, a revenue generating piece. And these are really simple ways, instead of building walls that block visuals, you're building kind of these passive walls that you can see through and, and they can be put into an active cellar with glass and all that stuff. And then the final thing that we're really seeing a lot of is just a wet or dry bar. 
you know, you've got high-end whiskey, you've got your, your spirits and, and martini glasses, and why not continue that trend? Everybody wants the wine there as well, because you can imagine sitting in this, this room and, uh, you know, to just to, we love to name drop on this one. This home is owned by Denise Richards, who rents it out to Angelina Jolie. So when like really famous people are sitting there, you know, who's to say they're not going to want a bottle of wine over their whiskey or, or champagne or something different. So integrating these design pieces into to the wet or dry bar gives us the opportunity to make sure that we can have that really interactive uh, kind of entertaining experience and not pigeonhole ourselves to one, one type of beverage. Everything is there for you and it makes a lot of sense. And then as we talk about um, kind of the, the glass and floating, which you've seen in here, this is really, um, we've moved them into different rooms. We've brought them into engaging points and now we're putting kind of glass and, and framing systems all together to create these meaningful things. So um, we call them the jewel box. They show off the labels. You know, you can do flexibility for long-term storage if you specify them right. Our friend at Wine Arts America, you know, this is keeping wine room designers from coast to coast on their toes as more and more buyers request visible and unique striking wine displays. You know, whether it is a uh, commercial environment like you're seeing sweet basil and veil shown in this one, you know, that glass cellar, the framing system against the glass is just putting that wine right there and, and essentially becoming a sales tool for them. In the home, it's just letting people like, you know, kind of brag on those allocated wines that they want. They want people to see behind glass those things that, that, that they love and have been collecting, spend a lot of money on. It's everywhere. We talk about this more in our passive versus active sellers, but we have single pane frameless glass, double pane, triple pane. There's a lot of thought that has to go into how to do these well, dependent on if they're a serious collector for long term. So I encourage you to dig deeper into that topic with us. But know that um, you know frameless glass is is really hot right now. Got to be very smart about how you do it. Double pane and triple pane is is also very very popular for the more hardcore collectors that want that beautiful glass enclosure, but don't want to have as much of the difficulty with insulation and, and heat value loss and all that fun stuff that comes with cooling. We cover that much more in detail there, but just know that these are these are everywhere and our customers are asking for them left and right. So make sure you can kind of talk about that and, and understand where they're coming from. One of the things that we cover in our in our big picture is is it takes planning, right? When you talk about cooling or not with these, like when you talk about glass and you're talking about these framing systems, these are something you should be doing in the very early of your planning process, not the latter part, because there's a lot of things to overcome with this amount of glass, UV rays, cooling issues, et cetera. And we want to think about them on day one, not day one before they move in. So um, take our active versus passive wine cellar training. Reach out to us if you need more resources on that. We're happy to help. And then, of course, there's the floating wine racks themselves that don't require glass. So in some of these elements you've seen cooling and some of them they're just really that, that room divider. And I'm gonna switch over to this and you're gonna see a video uh, for the next 58 seconds that shows one of our favorite restaurants in downtown Denver that utilizes this very well. And maybe it'll play. Uh, I guess it's not playing for us. So the, the joys of some technology there. I'll send a follow-up email to you guys if you wanna check out this video, it really shows um, a beautiful uh, way that this wine display broke off a cavernous subterranean wine room and, and they had no storage and they needed to break up the visuals so it served really well. And then the final trend that we're going to cover today is lights above, behind, below, wherever you can find them and it makes sense. We've put these wine displays into the forefront. They are in living rooms, they're you know in prominent areas in, in a restaurant and they're behind glass. People want to see them. So number one, Always use LEDs, just use LEDs. So that's rule number one. Beyond that, then start thinking about them in every way you can with the designer choices you're making with everything else. Uh, our friend Jeff in Vegas, you know, we have, we love giving the wine rooms uh, with glass and lighting them up to make a architectural element that kind of grounds the room. You see like the, the chandeliers that are shown in this picture. You see onyx panels shown in this, this picture. You see up lighting down light, you know, recessed lights from above, the chandeliers. Um, you can do like LED strips up the, up the columns that really give us a lot of just versatility to brighten the room. And if we're using LEDs, they're not adding in um, extra really heat to the room. And of course, they're not really turned on except for when you're in there. So they, they don't have a negative effect in terms of the storage uh, that you have to really consider too much. 
But the idea here is you should be working with your lighting expert on these projects in this room, just like you are in the kitchen, just like you are in the dining area, et cetera, because they're gonna have a lot of beautiful solutions. And then we can help you when you're working with us, um, if you need help on just understanding like some common tricks of kind of doing some of the, the strip lighting behind and, and all of that stuff. And that wraps it up. So a couple of things, um, we are here to help you guys out. This is a, a unique time for all of us, but we're hoping to provide meaningful distraction and inspiration that can help with your planning for projects that may still be in motion or maybe put on hold temporarily. Uh, reach out to us, we're still shipping product, a little bit delayed, but we can get everything out within uh, about 48 hours. We still have a full design service team for you. So if you need help, um, you know, thinking about a space. And then of course, we've got this webinar series that we've been doing uh, last week and this week. So sign on tomorrow for some sales tactics. Uh, and we've got some more stuff coming on. We'll redo the, uh, the products later in the month. So uh, vintageu.com backslash get dash trained. Please give us an email, marketing at vintageu.com. You can reach out to your sales rep. Let us know how we can help you. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, please feel drop us a line. We'll also be live on Instagram doing our virtual uh, office hours at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time uh, this afternoon. We've got a topic, a couple cool topics to cover, but also just uh, pop us with any questions that this or anything else that comes to mind. We're here to help you out. And we really wanna be a great resource for you, uh, both during this time when we're all kind of stuck at home trying to figure out what's up. And as the economy starts to kind of you know rip back into to shape, hopefully sooner than later, and we all get flooded with amazing projects to uh, bring wine storage into. My name is Jacob Harkins. Uh, happy to have spent the last half hour or so with you guys. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you tomorrow or any of our uh, social media outreaches in the, in the coming weeks. So have a great day and we will talk to you guys soon.